Next up, we have William Vanderblumen, who has been a significant leader in my own life. I had the joy of working with William and the Vanderblumen team for over eight years. William is the founder and CEO of Vanderblumen, which is an executive search firm that helps churches and values-based organizations and ministries all over the globe. He's an author and a speaker, and I can't wait to hear what William has to say today about leading with courage. William, thanks so much for being with us today. Hey, Holly, thanks. Good to be with you as well. I uh, hope you all don't trust everything that she read on that bio. I don't know who wrote that bio. But, uh. <laughs> I might know that person, maybe. <laughs> it's, it's all good true. To you again. Kind of. Yes, and, it's so uh, good to see you. Yeah, and what a cool model you guys have come up with. It's sort of almost there, but not there, but in person, but also virtual. I've been searching for a while. I think, like, what's the, like, biblical, you know, parallel to this? Here's one. This is a brand new thing. You know, props to you. The thing. Thanks. It's been fun to experience both the live and virtual. So uh, I can see Houston there behind you. Yeah, yeah. We've got a nice, bright, sunny day, finally. Our 2020, uh, we decided to extend it into February. We had a freeze, <laughs> yes. a 100-year yes. blizzard. Uh, and before the pandemic, we decided to have two 500-year floods. So, I, you know, I'm waiting on the four horsemen to arrive any day. It's, it's, uh, but today's nice. That's awesome. And <laughs> I, I, I thought today in the time that I've got, and I know Sean respects time boundaries, so I'll stay to it. Uh, but I thought I wanted to talk to people who are leaders, whether you're in the church or in the marketplace. I assume that you're following Jesus in some form or another, or at least trying, like I am. Uh, I, I want to encourage you and, and at the same time warn you. And Sean's going, William, I told you this is courage to lead, not warning about leading. But uh, the reality is there's, there's a two-sided coin that I think we're all facing. First of all, I just want to encourage you for being right where you are right now. You made it. <laughs> you got farther along than a whole lot of people. A lot of people have quit in the last year or two, and maybe some of you out there have. You're not alone. But if you're still leading... God's not done with you. And if you're still leading, know this. I firmly believe that assuming they let me into heaven, I'm Presbyterian, so it's, you know, the jury's kind of out. But once we get to heaven, I think they're going to hand out uh, merit badges for people that have been through things. And I, I think they're printing them right now that say 2020. Uh, you made it through 2020. Where there was an economic disruption, a ministry disruption, I own a business, and our clients are primarily churches, schools, and nonprofits. And I learned a great business principle about a year ago today, actually. I learned this. If all of your clients have to close, it's really not good for your business. <laughs> But uh, Holly was with us during that time, and many of you who are friends know that we just decided, you know what, we're going to use our cash reserves, and we're going to try and serve people that are stuck because of the pandemic. And if we die with our boots on, fine. But we came through, and I think we're a better team for it. As much as we miss you, Holly, it is it, you've left the place well, and it is doing well. And I would just encourage you who have made it to realize that you've made it through a really hard time. Now, here's a warning. Some staggering percentage, you can Google it, maybe not while I'm talking, a staggering percentage of auto accidents happen within one mile of home. Uh, if you're a, a Lord of the Rings nerd like I have been in years uh, gone by, you know, when Gandalf battles the Balrog, the big dragon demon thing, and he beats him and the Balrog falls down into the pit and Gandalf goes, and then turns around to leave and the last little tail of the Balrog grabs him and pulls him down. There's a warning. Rates are going down. Yes, Texas is open for business, but I think we're in a very tender place in leadership. And I would just tell you tonight, double down in your prayer life and say, thank you, Lord, I've made it this far. Help me make it through the last little leg of this journey. Now, as you look forward, there's one thing that I've been sounding an alarm bell for in the next 18 to 24 months. I'm already seeing it happen, and I'm calling it the great COVID job churn. 
What do I mean by that? I mean there's going to be more turnover in the next 18 to 24 months than there has been in the previous five to 10 years. Now, that's a huge statement, but there are very concrete reasons for that. This is not William playing prophetic. This is actual data-driven conclusion. Uh, first of all, there's been no turnover other than unwanted turnover for the last year. So there's a backlog of the system uh, that some people got out of their rut. And when you get out of your rut, you wonder, why am I in a rut? Why do I do this routine? And they're saying, why am I working for this company? Other people are saying, where do I want to work? Uh, if, if you're living anywhere near a, a destination city, like we have clients in Park City and you can't find housing for people that are going to work at clients in Park City right now. You can't find uh, places to live in the nice outskirts of town or an hour outside of Austin. So turnover is happening because people are asking why, people are asking where do I want to work. People are also moving jobs because their job just flat changed. It's not the same as it used to be. All those other duties as necessary is now the entirety of the job description. You're going to face turnover this year. I did. I've always said I need to have, and I think you should too, a vomit list. And you say, what is that? William's warning and vomiting, and this is terrible. Where's the encouragement? No, what I mean is, uh, you've all gotten it if you're a leader. You've gotten the email from somebody saying, can I have five minutes of your time at the end of the day? It won't take long. And you're like, oh, man. So what I want you to do is develop a list no longer than three people, three people on your team that if you got that email where you know they're coming in to tell you they're leaving, those three people would make you reach for a trash can because you need to bomb it. Uh, I had two of my three do that to me in the last 12 months. Couldn't be happier for them. Holly's one of them, and she's doing great things. She's started a company. She's working with Leader. It's amazing to see what God has done in launching her. And when I'm old, 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 hopefully, uh, I'll get to say I knew her back when. Same with Tim Stevens, who's now helping run Willow Creek. Well, what do you do to prepare for that turnover? You're not going to stop it. It's going to happen because this has disrupted the job market. Let me give you four areas to focus on. Very quickly, first of all, make sure your compensation is right. Make sure you're paying your people well enough. For those three people on your vomit list, maybe it's time to give them a raise. William, I don't know if we're coming through this or not. I can't give them a raise. How about this? Here's an idea. What if you gave them a retention bonus? I just did this. I said uh, with several clients, why don't you talk to your key employees and say, I want to bonus you an extra whatever the number is, $5,000, $10,000, $20,000. I want to give it to you on December 31st. Instead, I'm going to give it to you today. And unless I fire you for no reason, you can keep it unless you leave between now and December 31st. You don't have to sign the bonus if you don't want to, but if you'd like to have the money early and I can know you're going to be here, that's a smart move in the next 12 to 18 months. Think about your vomit list. Sew up good compensation. Bonus people where you can. Secondly, think of your culture. Bill did such a good job of talking about culture earlier. And he, when I grow up, I want to be Bill High. But uh, let me just tell you, you can't overvalue how important it is to create a workplace where people are referring their friends to apply for jobs. We've written a, a book called Culture Wins, and it's a real simple little read. Holly actually helped me put it together. And, and this is how simple this is. Go to Amazon and type Vanderblumen however you want to type it. You can misspell it a hundred ways. And there are only four books I've written, and all four of them will come up, and only one of them has the word culture in it. Culture Wins. Thirdly, push decisions down the food chain. Collaboration is going to be more important than ever. Over the last year, people have gotten used to being able to do things on the fly, get the result done, not worry about filling out a form. People have tasted that fruit and it's not gonna go away. As my friend Craig Grishel says, if you surround yourself, if you, if you give away tasks, you'll surround yourself with doers. If you give away authority, you'll surround yourself with leaders. Where can you give away more authority and not more tasks? When you give something away, could you say, could I give away the decision or not? Andy Stanley says some of the best advice his dad ever gave him was, you'll figure it out. Could you do that with your team? Could you collaborate a little better? Could you build a better workplace? And could you pay your people a little bit better? Last word, 
Think about when you're not there anymore. Every single leader is an interim leader. And, and succession has become kind of my micro specialty that I've uh, been trying to work on. I took furious notes while Bill was talking about that. I, I would maybe argue with Bill that it doesn't have to take 10 years, but that'd be a fun debate for the two of us to have. In any event, realizing that you're either going to run your company into the ground or you're going to be the leader of your company on the day Jesus returns. Cool. Very hard to schedule. Or... Someone's coming after you. So what are you doing to prepare for the successor in every position in your company? That's a warning. You've got to get that ready. You've got to get your culture right. You've got to get your compensation right. You've got to give away authority. But let me just say finally, as an encouragement and, and somewhat of a warning, the year in the pandemic may be over, but I think we're ready for a year of breakthrough. There is not a single time the church has been put under pressure that it hasn't broken through to new heights. And I think we're on the verge of a once every 500 years breakthrough. Every seminal kingdom breakthrough has happened on the heels of a communication breakthrough. Rome builds roads, Paul plants churches. We get a common Greek language, we canonize a New Testament. Printing press is invented, Martin Luther gets a Bible in everyone's hands. The internet has been coming on to the fore, but in the last year, it's become normalized. What will God do now? And that's a warning, that if you're not ready to lead, you need to move aside, because God is looking for people, and he is going to build his church in an amazing way. I think if Jesus doesn't come back for several hundred years, history's going to look back at our moment and say, what a cool time to have been alive, leading a business or a ministry or a team that's chasing Jesus. So hang in there. You've made it this far. You're in for the ride of a lifetime. And I hope something that I've said today hits home and helps your team.